Okay, what's going on, everybody? We are here. We're live. I want to thank you all for joining me today. If you haven't already, please drop a one in the comment section if you can hear and see me clearly. And secondly, while I'm waiting for the ones to come in, if you haven't already, uh, hit the like button because that is the most important thing that you can do for me on this channel. What it does is that it helps to make sure that those who are subscribed to the channel will indeed get their notifications and it also helps to push this video through the YouTube algorithm. Secondly, if you're new to the channel or maybe you've been ghost watching this channel for quite some time now, please do me a favor and yourself a favor by hitting the subscribe button as well as the bell notification next to the subscribe button so you can be notified whenever I release a new video. And lastly, please make sure you share this video out on your social media platforms as well. <laughs> Unsubscribe, okay, Gravity, uh, to let everyone know that I'm currently live to share this information out to your family and friends. Um, and that also does help to give me a small boost in the YouTube algorithm as well. And with the ones now coming into the live stream, uh, we can get today's show started. We can get it started. Now, uh, today's show is titled, uh, Greg Abbott Exposed the Truth Behind Joe Biden's Open borders. He exposed the truth about it. Um, now, concerning Greg Abbott, right, concerning Greg Abbott um, and this interview that he did with, I believe it was Fox Business News, right? Fox Business sometime last week. He gets into his reasoning behind why he believes Joe Biden uh, has the borders open. Um, and there's been a lot of theories that people have floating around concerning why that is the purpose of purposes or the purpose of Joe Biden's open border policy. But um, I feel that what Greg Abbott is getting ready to explain right now is the most plausible out of the numerous theories uh, and reasonings that people have put out there. I feel like this is the most plausible. Uh, and I want to play that for you right now and really break down what he's discussing, because he said a few things or one thing in particular um, in his articulation of why the borders are open. He said something that I didn't know was true. Right. And I went down a rabbit hole of verifying whether or not what he was saying was true. And it just made everything that much more clear as it pertains to why uh, Joe Biden has the borders open the way that they do. So now that that long spiel is out of the way, uh, let's get into the actual clip. Let's get into the clip. And before I do that, shout out to Kid Gravity for one month of service. I appreciate you, bro. Uh, Kid Gravity says salute to the gators of the Rio Grande protecting. <laughs> Salute to the gators of the Rio Grande. Now let's jump into this, man. Let's, uh, let me pull this up for you guys right now and let's just get into what Greg Abbott has to say. A Texas immigration law is still tied up in a federal appeals court. Texas's SB4 would allow state law enforcement to arrest and detain illegal migrants. But a Fifth Circuit court is blocking the measure and did so again last week as the Biden administration continues to aim to hold to keep this law on hold. Joining me now is Texas Governor Greg Abbott. Governor, it's great to see you this morning. Thank you so much for being here. You're on the front line of this border crisis, have been from day one and have been doing everything to try to protect Texas and the country. Your reaction to this latest uh, blocking of your law? So on this law that I signed, listen, uh, we made the oral arguments in, um, in the Federal Court of Appeals. And uh, candidly, uh, we made arguments that the Biden administration was incapable of, re of responding to. And it's this, and that is that uh, there are three laws in the books that Biden is not enforcing. One is to uh, deny illegal entry into the country. Uh, the other is to detain anybody who gets here illegally. And the third is to build border barriers. The Biden administration is doing none of those. Uh, what the Texas law authorizes the state of Texas Texas to do uh, is to do all three of those things. We believe that the federal courts should allow Texas to basically be enforcing federal laws because Biden is not enforcing them. So now I'm not going to spend too much on that first half of what he said, because that's not what this stream is about. But just to lightly elaborate on it, everything that he, Eric Greg Abbott is saying right there are things that we've discussed numerous times before. And is that if Joe Biden would just enforce the laws that we currently have on the books, there would be no migrant crisis. There wouldn't be any migrant crisis. Uh, he, he wouldn't have to bring back Title 42 and, and all these other things, Trump. Uh, era policies, as people like to say, if you would just enforce the basic border laws that are on the books currently, our migration laws, I guess you call it, 
uh, we wouldn't be in this situation. Uh, but he's not doing the basics. He isn't even doing the basics. And that's why we are where we are today, uh, let alone stripping back the Trump era policies. Right. But here's the meat of this video and what I want to get into that brought me down the rabbit hole to the conclusion that Greg Abbott has the most plausible theory on why this migrant crisis is even occurring. Obviously, it's occurring deliberately uh, due to Joe Biden. So let's get back into what Greg Abbott has to say. I don't understand why the president of the United States is not enforcing the laws of our country. What is the motivation to keep this border wide open? I mean, the fact that they fought you till the end on that razor wire is stunning enough, but he does not want you arresting people who break the law in your own state. Well, it's outrageous. Listen, there's a there's a far left progressive agenda uh, in this country, and he's for one catering to them. But uh, Maria, remember this also, and that is uh, the, the more people that he allows in illegally, uh, those people can be counted toward the census. Uh, the census is used to uh, apportion the number of members of Congress as well as uh, the electors uh, for the presidential election. Uh, and so, even though California may be uh, losing their own citizens to states like Texas, uh, they're gaining residents that will count toward of the census by the illegal immigrants allowed in by Joe Biden. That I didn't know. Some of you might be thinking, really? You didn't know that, TD? I personally had no idea that illegal immigrants were counted on the U.S. Census as part of said state's population. I had no idea. I had no idea. So from that point on, you know, I'm thinking to myself, well, let me verify this for myself. You know, I just I got to see it for myself. So then you just start to go down the rabbit hole of this. And I wanted to present this to you all, too, in case, you know, you all didn't know. But then to understand the degree to which what he's saying is true, that makes it all make sense as a, as it pertains to why uh, Biden has these borders open. Um, and we see these migrants, right, illegal immigrants flooding into states like Illinois, uh, Los Angeles and New York. So first we come here, right? And just so you all know, uh, everything that you see on your screen right now as it pertains to the video that I just played, as it pertains to all the articles that appear on your screen, uh, all the links to the videos and articles are in the description box below if you want to read and watch these things for yourself uh, and for your own personal education, right? Uh, just so you all know that for sure. Now, let's get into this very quickly. We're going to go through this. So this is just United States Census Bureau, right? Frequently asked questions. Once again, like I said, I had no idea. I didn't know this. Are unauthorized immigrants, illegal immigrants, included in the residents' population count? Yes. All people, citizens and non-citizens, with a usual residence in the United States are included in the residents' population for the census. But then I move over to Pew Research because I wanted to understand the degree to which the illegal immigration count within the census has an impact on how many uh, representatives are in the House of Representatives, you know, according to the size of the state. I wanted to have a better gauge and understanding of that. So then I found this article here from Pew Research written back uh, July 24th of 2020 titled, and I always have a hard time saying that this word here, but here we go, right? How removing unauthorized immigrants for census statistics could affect, could affect house reapportionment. Reapportionment. I said I struggled with that word, but I literally struggled with the whole title of this article. <laughs> so I'll try to read it one more time and not sound too ridiculous. How removing unauthorized immigrants, illegal immigrants, from census statistics could affect house reapportionment, right? So let's get into that right now. Let's dive into that. And before we do, there are 254 of you in the stream right now. If you haven't already, please hit the like button because that is extremely important to the growth of this channel. And thank you very much. Let's get into this, right? Let's get into this because it gets even more interesting once we get past this point. Since the first census of the United States in 1970, counts that include both citizens and non-citizens have been used to apportion seats in the House of Representatives, which states gaining or losing based on population change over the previous decade. If unauthorized immigrants in the U.S. were removed from the 2020 census apportionment count, 
which the White House seeks to do, that was Donald Trump's White House at the time, three states could each lose a seat they otherwise would have had, and three others each could gain one according to a Pew Research Center analysis based on government records. Let's scroll down a bit. The apportionment of seats in Congress is required by the U.S. Constitution, which says that the census will be used to divide the House of Representatives among the several states according to their respective numbers, counting the whole number of persons in each state, obviously, which includes illegal immigrants. The number of seats in the House was fixed at 435 following the 1910 census. Each state gets one seat and the remainder are assigned according to a complex formula based on relative population size. So now what I wanna do is I wanna come to this data point right here. And it's titled Projected Change in Congressional Seats After 2020 Census. So now when we come here, and blow it up. <clears throat> this really highlights the degree to which having this illegal immigration count impacts the House of Representatives, right? It's This is what this is going to highlight. So let me scroll in a bit more so you can see it a bit more clearly. And what you'll see here is that as it pertains to Texas, all right, as it pertains to Texas, after the U.S. Census is counted for, the 2020, Texas would gain three seats in the House of Representatives. But if you minus the illegal immigration count, they lose a seat. So in reality, they would only get two seats. Florida, if everything remains as is, would gain two seats in the House of Representatives. But if you minus the illegal immigration count, they would only get one seat. Okay, fair enough. But when you come to California, because California has been losing its population, the population has been decreasing, California, if everything remains as is, would lose a seat, right, in which they did. But if you remove the illegal immigration count, they would lose another seat. So essentially, they would lose two seats in a scenario where counting illegal immigrants on the census was now forbidden, illegal. And I wanna come over here very quickly just to highlight this, because they even state this in, I believe, yes, this New York Times article. The population of California declined again in 2022. The state's population dropped roughly 138,400 people to 38.94 million. I'm just gonna read this one paragraph very quickly blow it up just a little bit so you can read along with me. It was big news a few years ago when for the first time in more than a century, California's population shrank. The small but still startling decline in 2020 was driven by C19 deaths and falling immigration and birth rates. And it was something of a turning point for a huge state founded on rapid growth and long accustomed to it, the population slowdown even cost California a congressional seat. My point for bringing this up is that once again, they even acknowledge here there was a fall in immigration to California, which also contributed to this continuous declining, which led to them losing a seat. And once again, if you strip away the illegal immigration count from the population, from, this US, from the U.S. Census, they ultimately would have lost two seats. But now let's head over to Illinois and New York, right? Because that's the two city or two states, I should say, that I focus on frequently uh, when discussing the migrant crisis is Illinois and New York, right? So when you come to New York, as you can see here, and right above it is Illinois, both Illinois and New York, if the census stays as is, counting illegal immigrants as well, they both still lose a representative in-house representative, Illinois and New York. They both 
still lose. And these states have been struggling with maintaining their population for quite some time now. I want to come over here real quick. I believe this is New York I want to pull up first. New York's population loss slowed a bit in 2023, but loss still worst in the U.S. Let's get into this. Let's get into this very quickly. New York's population decreased by 101,984 residents, the largest loss of any state during the 12-month period that ended last July 1st, according to just released Census Bureau estimates. OK, and the other thing, too, that I forgot to highlight before we can before we carry on is that when you look at Illinois and New York, coming back to the data point. Even when you minus the illegal immigrant population, everything roughly stayed the same. But when you come back to the fact that these states are losing their population count at a rapid pace, it then makes it that much more clear why they actually want. Biden's migrants coming into their state, because though this time around in 2020, they didn't lose anything as it pertains to census, as it pertains to the House of Representative count. By the next census, with the trajectory the way it is, with Illinois and New York losing the population the way that they are, they're slated to lose a lot more than one or two people in the House of Representatives. Right. So now let's come back to New York. Let's come back to New York. And I'm going to start off and I want to read that paragraph one more time. New York's population decreased by 101,984 residents, the largest loss of any state during a 12 month period that ended last July 1st, according to just released U.S. Census Bureau estimates. Right. Since 2020, the Census Bureau estimates New York has lost. 884,000 residents to other states. So mind you, this was written, what, in December of 2023? So in a short three, realistically four-year period, their population count dropped roughly almost a million. Almost a million. New York's out-migration loss was only, was only partially offset by a net gain of 73,867 international migrants, ranking the state fourth in that category after Florida, 178,000, California, 150,000, and Texas, 128,000, leaving the Empire State with a combined domestic international migration loss of 142,911 residents in the last period and 701,412 since the 2020 census. This is the last paragraph that I'm going to read here on New York. New York's population decline was the largest among the eight states with any population loss during the period. On a percentage basis, the New York population decrease of 0.5% also was the nation's largest trail by Louisiana and Hawaii at negative 0.3% each. In nominal terms, California's population decrease of 75,423 was the second largest of any states, but represented just 0.2% of its 2022 estimated population. Let's look at this data point down here. State population trends, 2022 to 2023. Who do you see in bright red? In bright red, you see New York. It's New York in bright red. That's as red as it gets as it pertains to population loss and the trends from 2022 to 2023. But who else do you see? You see Illinois as well. It's not as dark red as New York, but it's red. And then you also see California on top of that. Once again, this is why illegal immigration is so important to these states because they need to substitute that population loss so they don't keep losing representation in the House of Representatives. At the current trajectory that they're at, when you remove the illegal immigration count from the U.S. Census, you remove their representation from the House of Representatives. But as the population continues to grow, 
at the pace that is growing, the rapid pace, the irregular pace that is growing, because they're all coming to New York and Chicago and Los Angeles, them being illegal immigrants, that stabilizes everything off. Now what I want to do is go into Illinois, right? Because Illinois has been struggling for a decade now, right? They've been struggling for a decade concerning their population loss. Illinois population drops for 10th year in a row during 2023. 10th year in a row. People moving out of Illinois led to the 10th conservative year of population decline, a new Census Bureau data shows. Illinois' population, let me zoom in a little bit more for you. Illinois' population declined by 32,826 residents from July 2022 to July 2023, according to estimates released December 19th by the U.S. Census Bureau. This marks the 10th consecutive year, consecutive, not conservative, the 10th consecutive year of population decline for Illinois, according to census estimates. The only state that's population has been declining longer is West Virginia, currently is suffering its 11th consecutive year of population decline. And look at this here. Illinois sees 10th straight year of population loss in 2023. Every year, it seemingly gets worse and worse for the state of Illinois. So now when you're seeing all of these illegal immigrants flooding into Chicago and into the state of Illinois as a whole, but primarily into Chicago, and you're seeing this endless amount of funds being poured into them to make sure that they have housing that Chicago's homeless citizen population don't even have access to. They told you to wait for Bring Chicago Home, which failed at the ballot box, but it failed in the courts prior to even making it to the ballot box because the courts deemed it invalid, right? The citizens had to wait and now still have to wait to be housed if they're homeless. But Brandon Johnson and J.B. Pritzker are wasting no time housing the illegal immigrant population, wasting no time at all, making sure that they're comfortable and having the things that they need because they actually need that population to remain in the city and remain in the state to offset the number of people that are continuously leaving. Once again, look at this data point here concerning the state of Illinois. Every year it gets worse and worse. They can't keep anybody in the state. And I guess technically I'm one of them because <laughs> I left Chicago. What was that back in um, 2005? I think it was. I've been left. <laughs> I've been gone. I've been left Chicago. Right. I've been left. Um, and it looks like a lot of people left behind me. A whole lot of people left behind me. But another thing to highlight as well, as we're coming around to a close. Take everything that I'm saying here. And then also consider the reality of the strong push that these democratic cities and states have been on concerning non-citizen voting, right? Because now we're getting into the, you could call it the title, subtitle, I guess it's called, that's actually on the thumbnail. And I believe on the thumbnail, um, I labeled the title of this video via the thumbnail. I think I called it... Um, 100 years of, I, I think I said 100 years of Democrat, Democratic dominance, right? And that's really what this is here. It's a play at the next 100 year of Democrat Party dominance in the U.S. Because number one, you have this influx of illegal immigrants that are coming into the state in order to offset the exodus that's happening in these states so that these states don't lose their representation within the House of Representatives. So that's number one. Number two, these same states and or cities slash cities, Chicago, New York City, Boston, Washington, D.C., have been aggressively pushing non-citizen voting in local elections. They've been aggressively pushing that. 
Washington, D.C. is the only state so far that was successful in that. I believe here in Los Angeles we have that here, too. I believe we do, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but Washington was recently successful in that. I believe it was in 2022. Boston has failed twice, if I'm not mistaken, in their efforts, but they're going to keep trying. New York failed, um, but if I'm not mistaken, they're, appe they're appealing the Supreme Court decision. The New York State Supreme Court um, shot it down. And the city council, uh, non-citizen voting, uh, they voted for it in New York City Council and it became law, technically. Uh, but then the law got sent to the New York State Supreme Court and New York State Supreme Court uh, shot it down as unconstitutional because I believe within the New York State Constitution, the states do have to be a citizen to be able to vote in local elections. But once again, uh, if I remember correctly, that's being appealed, uh, I believe, by the Eric Adams administration, if I'm not mistaken. And then in Illinois, state of Illinois and Chicago, really, when you're talking about Illinois, they haven't attempted non implementing non-citizen voting yet. Um, it's definitely not the time right now <laughs> for them to try it. Um, but I've said this consistently. I do believe there will be a push to implement non-citizen voting in the state of Illinois, particularly in the city of Chicago, uh, before Brandon Johnson exits. And the reason I believe that is because in a video that I've played numerous times before, I'm not going to play it right now. Uh, Brandon Johnson was asked a question, a very clear question about how he felt about non-citizen voting. And he danced around it. He didn't answer the question, to say the very least. He didn't answer the question. Um, so his unwillingness to answer that question means that he supports non-citizen voting in Chicago. Uh, he just doesn't want to articulate that right now. He wants to spring that on the population when the time comes. And to be honest, uh, I don't think it's going to be Brandon Johnson that actually springs that upon the population. Um, it's going to be J.B. Pritzker because uh, J.B. Pritzker has been very aggressive with making sure that Illinois, the state of Illinois, lives to um, its, its reputation as being the most welcoming state for legal immigrants uh, in the country. He wants to live up to that reputation. Uh, he's already implemented non-citizen policing in the state of Illinois. Um, and he also implemented um, non-citizen driver's license. So if you're not a citizen, you can get a driver's license. If you're a legal immigrant, you can get a driver's license. Um, and that's also something that exists here in Los Angeles. But he's been aggressive in Illinois, uh, pushing this stuff forward. So it's only a matter of time till he makes the push for non-citizen voting in the state of Illinois. And then number three, as it pertains to the long goal and the long game, right, of 100 years of DNC dominance, you have to acknowledge the fact as well, as it pertains to irregular growth in the population, outside of the fact that the illegal immigrant population will be counted in the U.S. Census to boost the numbers in these states, you also have to take into account that these people are having children, right? They're having children. And they will be citizens upon birth. Upon birth, they become citizens. So not only does that count to the irregular population growth, because it's not natural population growth, but not only does it count to the irregular population growth, but they are solidifying that voter base moving forward into the future, right? Because those children are going to be the same children that once they get into their, you know, mid, late 20s, 30s, whenever you see, you start seeing people pop up on the political scene in a serious way, right? Late 20s, early 30s, they're going to be the ones giving their heartfelt sob stories about how their mother trekked the Darien, was a Darien Gap and made it through El Paso and the barbed wire uh, to get to this country to experience the American dream and partake in the American dream. And I was able to be born here uh, because uh, of that journey that they partaked in and because of the Democratic Party policies. And you had evil people like Donald Trump and <laughs> the TD media groups in the world who opposed this, but we persevere and made it anyways. And it's because of DNC policies that I'm here today. And it's because of those same DNC policies that I'm going to continue to push those policies moving forward and continue uh, the tradition now in my family of voting blue, right? They're playing the long game. 
This is why on the title of the thumbnail, I put 100 years of Democratic Party dominance, because that's what this is all about. That's what this is all about. Once again, in closing, I've heard a bunch of theories, a bunch of theories on why, you know, Biden has the border open the way that he does. But the information that Greg Abbott put forth is the most plausible as it pertains to maintaining dominance from now until the foreseeable future, from the irregular population growth by way of the illegal immigration count being upon the U.S. sentence, US, U.S. census to offset the decline in population that's leaving, number one, to non-citizen voting, number two, and number three, the children being born of the illegal immigrants who now are automatically citizens. And because of that, and their gratefulness towards their parents, which I get, they will in turn extend that gratitude to their loyalty to the Democratic Party moving forward. So this is a 100 year plan uh, by the Democratic Party um, as far as I'm concerned. And we'll see how this plays out moving forward. We will see how it plays out moving forward. And with all that being said, that does it for today's video. So I wanna thank you all for joining me today. There are 436 of you all in the stream right now. If you haven't already, please hit the like button on your way out. Subscribe to the channel if you're new to the channel. Share this video out on your social media platforms. And also, don't forget to follow me on Telegram at TD Media Group. The link to the Telegram is in the description box below. It will be pinned in the comment section once the stream is over. It should be pinned in the live chat right now. And until the next video, to the next live stream uh, tomorrow evening at 6.30 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, uh, have a great afternoon and a safe one. Peace.